So, in the land before time, there were these omnipotent shape-changing dudes called the Pie Crushers, and they spread their seed all throughout the galaxy, which is kinda gross, and gave birth to a bunch of weird aliens like these guys, these guys, and these guys, but most importantly these two. Ancient humanity, who were really into Avatar, face paint, and Tron back in the old days, and the front runners. The Pie Crushers gave humanity the mantelpiece of responsibility, which gave them permission to be the older brother and look after everyone else, and the front runners really didn't like that, so they just wiped out a seemingly omnipotent godlike race while the Pie Crushers were just vibing like, yo dude, they wiping us out? Yeah, I think they are, man. So they turned themselves into 100% pure export quality Colombian cocaine dust, except for one of them called Primordial, who the front runners locked up. Apparently anyone who talked to him just straight up killed themselves, so he must have been really fun at parties. That cocaine, by the way, was so good that humans started giving it to their space doggos, which eventually caused them to mutate and spread a virus which turned everyone into nasty ass space zombies called the Flood. The Flood started spreading faster than a poison ivy rash, so ancient humanity was like, yo, uh, what do we do about these guys? Blow up all the planets. Did I fucking stutter? Okay. Uh, hey, look, I guess that works. So all the planets the Flood were on, humans started blowing up, including a front-runner planet. They obviously didn't like this, so they decided to wipe out humanity and de-evolve them back to being cavemen because I guess the front runners like pranks or some shit. The flood kept spreading though, and the front runners tried a whole bunch of stuff to stop them, including this fella called Mendic Bias, who was an Ancilla, though we call them AI because we're not stupid. This guy was sent in to interview the Primordial to figure out what the deal was with the Flood. Instead, Mendicant changed teams mid-game and started working for the Primordial and the Flood. So the front runners decided the best way to counter their AI was to build another AI, because that worked so well the first time. Wait, it it it, it did actually work? Damn, okay. Um did not expect that. So Mendic had his remains thrown on a halo ring and, and some on the ark, and oh shit, I forgot to mention the halo rings. So yeah, they were made by the front runners to wipe out all life in the galaxy and they were made on the Ark, which is like a Halo factory. That's basically all you need to know. After a bunch of crazy shit happened and Voldemort got locked up in a big ball, don't worry, we'll get to that. They fired the Halo rings and so the galaxy was purged of all life. The end! But not actually, because one front runner, ironically called the Librarian, took the genetic templates of all life in the galaxy and reseeded it. What the fuck is up with godlike races spreading their seed everywhere? It's disgusting. disgusting. They also kept some flood. Yeah. This galaxy-eating parasite, and you're like, nah, we'll just put it behind some glass, she'll be right. No wonder you dumb fuckers are all dead. Flash forward several hundred thousand years, and humanity is less about the face paint and Tron nowadays, and bases their whole look on starship troopers and aliens. They've developed this technology called slip space that allows them to go in one wormhole and pop out somewhere else. Humanity is also just doing what it does best, making babies and building shoddy apartments on planets everywhere, and calling them colonies. And they're also killing each other. Love that. 500 years in the future, and we still can't chill the fuck out. So this group of Illuminati- What did he say? <laughs> this group of Illuminati- <laughs> Holy crap! So this group of Illuminati worshipping creepy dudes called Oni phoned up their side hoe Catherine Halsey, and were like, Yo, so, uh, we need super soldiers. And Catherine was like, Yeah, give me a handful of six-year-olds. And no other questions were asked for some reason. These kids were taken from their families, put into a regimented life, had a bunch of needles stuck in them, and became the Spartan Twos, the galaxy's most awesome badasses, though a lot of them died. Feels bad, man. One of these Spartans was John Halo, who doesn't afraid of anything and is a pretty cool guy, along with Fred, <laughs> just Fred, apparently, Kelly, and mm. who made up Blue Team. Meanwhile, on the other side of the galaxy, those alien guys I was telling you about before, yeah, well, they found Space Jesus and decided to all form a religion that worships front-runner stuff, and a lot of human worlds, full of it. So they're all like, Yeah, uh, actually, we're gonna wipe you all the fuck out because you're an affront to our beliefs and are the only ones who can activate and use all this technology, which you'd think might be cause for concern and maybe stopping this mass genocide, but nah, we're gonna kill you all anyway. Okay, guess we'll die. The Covenant go on a killing spree and glass a bunch of humans using their big death lasers. Thankfully though, the Spartans are here to save the day. No, they're not. They're not. While they're good at what they do, the Covenant are just built different, and so humanity is stuck in a constant state of retreat with battles happening all over the galaxy. One such battle took place on the planet Harvest with the crew of the Spirit of Fire, who got lost, found Red Team, then found this forerunner hollow Earth place, realized the Covenant wanted the fancy ships inside, so they used their ship's engine core to blow it up, and we lost a real G because of it. Salutes for Sergeant Forge. Now they're floating in space, but we'll get to that later. 
Another important human world was called Reach. There were two crazy fights happening on Reach, one with John Halo and his blue team Spartans, and another with Noble Team. You had generic leader guy, Carter, who you know is important because he's got a walkie-talkie, Kat, who was a nasty case of Anakin Skywalker syndrome and built her own PC when she was like 15, the month of June, who likes camping like a little bitch, Skullboy, who never got past his Linkin Park phase, Big Boy George, who was best mates with Heavy from TF2, and Noble Six. You guys find out the Covenant is on Reach, try your best to stop them from invading, fail miserably, George dies and Cat gets fucking domed, and you get called to the principal's office and instead of expelling you, she gives you a glass jar with part of an e-girl inside of it. The other part is with John Halo, who is currently trying to kidnap a prophet to use him as a bargaining tool to get the Covenant to leave. That doesn't go so well. A bunch of people in blue team either die or disappear or... Uh, both, and John has a freezer nap. Meanwhile, Carter obviously watched too many World War II era Japan military tactics, and Skullboy gets penetrated from the rear. Harder, Daddy. What? June runs off to live a happy, prosperous life with Catherine Halsey, where they had several children and lived happily ever after, and Noble Six delivers the other part of the e-girl to Captain Kharkis, and totally survives the Covenant invasion by hiding in a cave. On board the Column of Autumn, a human ship, Captain Kharkis is talking to our favourite e-girl, xxcortanalive.xx, and they find one of the front-runner Halo rings. Turns out the Covenant followed them, and they're all about these halos. John gets woken up from his freezer nap and has to take Cortana with him off the ship as the Covenant are invading. Karkis gives you a gun with no ammo, so you spend the remainder of the mission desperately clobbering everything in sight to death with the butt of this gun, just blunt force trauma to the skull, and you finally make it on board the escape pod where you land on the Septum Ring. You drive around in the Jeep Wrangler for a bit, find out that for a guy called Captain Karkis, he's a shit driver, and that the Column of Fall has crashed somewhere, and Karkis was captured. So you and your best friend, Colonel Long Johnson, go to find this Covenant ship and rescue him, where Karkis again proves his incredible driving talent. Then you go on vacation on this really nice beach, take a quick trip to Siberia to find the control room, where Gortana tells you that Karkis has been kidnapped AGAIN, for fuck's sake, man. Man, you're a high-ranking military official. You should know better than this. So you go to Shrek Swamp, and then there's demonic popcorn coming after you, which is apparently the flood. You escape the popcorn and bump into 343 Innocent till proven guilty Spark, who's been trying to contact you about your car's extended warranty. So he teleports John to a bookshop with no books. John doesn't like this because he's an avid reader, so he spends 45 minutes walking around being completely lost till he finds the legendary key to open the best loot chest. Innocent Spark teleports them back to the control room, where Cortana is jealous that John has a new e-boy best friend, and reveals what we knew all along, that Halo was a big weapon used to kill everything. John doesn't like that, so they run off to find Captain Karkis, who is now, well, yeah, he's not feeling so good. So you shoot him to put him out of his misery. Oh no, what the fuck? Jesus, you at least could have rolled a grenade under there or something. God. You steal Karkis' Apple wallet code inside his head, so now you can buy a sick new set of armor for the sequel. Then you go back to the Column of Fall and blow up its engines, destroying the Halo ring in the process. That sounds kind of familiar. Halo 2, Electric Boogaloo. John Halo is back on Earth and he's used Captain Karki's Apple Wallet to get a cool new suit of armor that's extremely resilient. Not really. General Long Johnson yeah, chats you up and Admiral Hellboy gives you a few new fancy medals when suddenly the Covenant turns up late to the party and completely uninvited. All right, who let them see the Facebook event page, all right? It was supposed to be private. We also meet Captain Karki's daughter, Commander House Keys. Maybe she's a better pilot than her dad? No, spoilers, she's really not. <laughs> You fly a spicy space pickle back to one of the Covenant ships, and because the Covenant are allergic to pickles, they all die. Meanwhile, on the Holy Space Mushroom, some dude called the Arbiter is getting chastised over his failure to safeguard the last Halo ring, as John blew it up in the last game. There's also these bull chinian looking dudes called Prophets, and these monkey guys who are led by this lad Tartar sauce, who's such a big fan of fish and chips that he's named himself after his favorite sauce. Arbiter has his clothes taken off and brought out back to give the Prophets a private dance, and they give him a shiny new set of armor to thank him for it. They send him off to deal with this guy called the Heretic Leader because Oakley wraparounds aren't fashionable anymore. Please stop wearing them. It's 2021 for Christ's sake. Meanwhile, the Covenant are messing around on Earth trying to find a kebab shop when the Prophet of Regret, the guy who's leading all these Covenant, decides to peace out and go home, but not without Commander House Keys chasing after him. They go through a portal and end up at... You guessed it, another Halo ring. All the while this is going on, some poor lost boy is walking around Africa trying to find his mum and dad while listening to jazz on repeat. That's the plot of Halo 3 ODST, right? John jumps onto the Halo ring, punches Regret to death in a brutal bar fight that lasts at least seven minutes, and after all that brawling, he jumps into the water for a quick swim to cool off, where he's dragged off by a tentacle. 
Great. First it's spreading seed, then eagles and jars, now tentacles, what could possibly be next? Meanwhile, Arbiter is trying to get the legendary key for the best loot chest and comes across House Keys and Long Johnson. Turns out Tartasaurus is actually not Arbiter's best friend and he kicks him down a bottomless shaft, only to find his new best friend John and what the fuck is that? So apparently that thing is the King of the Flood and he wants to stop this Halo Ring from firing as well. He sends John to the Holy Space Mushroom to find the legendary loot key and Arbiter to some cliffside in the middle of nowhere where he sees his homies being executed. Arbiter meets up with his bro Half Jaw and Private Long Johnson, and they go to stop Tartasaurus from firing the Halo Ring. Meanwhile, John gets stuck in the High Charity Play Place tunnel and forgets to get Cortana on the way out. He follows the Prophet of Truth on a big space triangle all the way back to Earth. Arbiter kills Tartasaurus and finds out that because this Halo Ring almost fired, the rest of them are gearing up to go off as well. Oh dear. Halo 3, John rides back to Earth on a literal door and Colonel Long Johnson finds him taking a power nap and his best friend Arbiter is here and they do their super secret best friend handshake which involves sticking guns in their mouths. Turns out the Covenant are invading Earth and are looking for some old front runner stuff in Africa. So they meet up with Commander House Keys, fun fact, John is using the same hand here as he did to punch a fucking hole in her father's face and they get their Zoom call with Admiral Half Melted Wax model interrupted by this ugly fucker who sounds different. In fact, a lot of people sound different in this game. Someone please explain that. John and Arbiter push back the Covenant and discover the big thing under Africa. It's a big space anus. But before they can go through, the Flood turns up to ruin the party along with 343 guilty till proven innocent spark. Half draw in his boy's glass half of Africa and John finds a message in his DMs from Cortana who's like, yo dude, you left me behind, what the fuck? So they go through the portal, Half Jaw says something about ratios, and they're about to finish the fight when the Holy Space Mushroom turns up, which is now closer to being a Death Cat Mushroom, because the Flood have been living there rent-free for a little bit. Sergeant Long Johnson, of course, gets captured and is about to fire the Halo Rings when Commander House Keys to the rescue! She fucking dies, what a shame. Arbiter and John stop Bolchinian from firing all the Halo Rings, and we miss out on what could have been a really cool boss fight against the Gravemind, only to fall down a garbage chute and find that they're making another Halo Ring. Oh boy, because that's gonna go so well. John goes to the Space Mushroom to find Cortana, breaks her out, and they go to fire this new Halo to stop the Flood here on the Ark without killing a load of other people. 343 Innocent Till Proven Guilty Spark is definitely fucking guilty, so you blow him away with Long Johnson's laser pointer. It's super effective. Johnson carks it, and you and the Arbiter run away in the Jeep Wrangler. You go back through the portal, but not completely. Arbiter manages to get back home safe, but John gets stuck in the middle of nowhere, I'm Northern Territory, Australia, fun. with Cortana to keep him company. Jokes, he's just gonna take a nap for half a decade. Halo 4, John gets woken up by by, whoa, 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 yo, Cortana. Okay, you, goddamn, you go make me act up. But there's no time to simp because the ship is being attacked by orange lasers and the Covenant. The ship gets sucked into a giant forerunner world called Requiem, and Cortana reveals that she has stage four ligma. John says they can find a cure if they get back to Earth, so he puts it on the top of his to-do list. They start getting a chat request from Captain Picard of the USS Enterprise and get attacked by glowing skull boys named after that weird alien prequel movie. So they go to talk to Space Voldemort to get the Wi-Fi password for Requiem. Turns out he's been living on 4G for several hundred thousand years and his cell phone provider wants him to pay up, but he whizzes off before they can get to him. Captain Picard reckons they should leave Requiem, but John and Cortana want to stay and get the most out of their holiday. Picard says no, so this absolute mad lad Lasky gives them a pelican to go and do some sightseeing. They they find Voldemort and follow him to another, everyone together now, Halo Ring. Yeah, big surprise. Turns out Voldemort has ditched magic in favour of turning people into Prometheans, and he wants this thing called the Composer to do it. Voldemort gets the Composer, runs off to Earth, and plans to use it to wipe out all the humans and turn them into Prometheans. John and Cortana take a ship to go after him with plans to blow up his ship with a nuke. Cortana's Ligma kicks in, and she gets abracadabra by Voldemort. Apparently, Voldemort is into BDSM, so she ties him down while John sticks this thing in him, and he explodes. John punches a fucking nuke, and he has one last moment with Cortana before she succumbs to Ligma and everyone was sad. <laughs> Halo 5, so um, yeah, uh, this was a game that was made. Uh, apparently all of Blue Team are alive and John is off doing missions to try and get over Cortana's death because he's a sad boy now. He has a fever dream about her, thinks she's alive and apparently she is, but no one told him. So he goes rogue trying to find Cortana and these guys called Fire Team of Saris are sent off to bring John and the rest of Blue Team in. Honestly, this game sucks. I don't like the story. I don't want to talk about the story, but all you have to know is Cortana is evil now for some reason, and she's using these big metal birds to EMP everything and take control of the galaxy. John meets up with his best friend Arbiter again and his foster mum Catherine Halsey. 
Remember the Spirit of Fire? Well, those guys have been floating through space for literal decades and find themselves on the Ark with a group of naughty monkeys called the Banished knocking about, and they're led by this guy called Ajax Brain Wipe. To try and get in contact with other people from Earth, the Spirit of Fire crew decided it'd be a good idea to build another Halo ring. Ajax doesn't like that, and the ring teleports away with Professor Colonel Sanders, the smart one, on the ring. And she gets held up by one of the Metal Birds from Halo 5. Oh no! And then there's Halo Infinite. John has a new set of fancy looking armor that he paid for with Captain Keys' Apple Wallet. He's got a new best friend called Brohammer, and Cortana has a younger twin now. I have no idea what's gonna happen next, but I'm damn sure it's gonna be a lot of fun. Well, actually, that's a lie. All the YouTubers with over 100,000 subscribers know what's gonna happen next because they got early access to the campaign. But hey, you know, for the rest of us, it's gonna be awesome.